What's happening peeps and pants? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. In this video, I'm not going to review a um, ship that is current. Um, and by that I mean this ship is not being released currently. This is an older ship that has been released like 2016, if you know memory serves me right. And um, a lot of you guys have been asking to do like a follow-up, a updated video with all of the different visuals and all of that. So the amount of people that have been asking this has been slowly stacking up to a point that I'm just going to give in to the peer pressure of you guys because, you know, it's basically reaching like, um, you know, the, the really high numbers in the 80, in the 90 that you guys are requesting that. So I'm just going to do a, you know, another review on the same ship. And obviously you guys know what kind of ship I'm going to do this review because you clicked on the title. Um, but this is the ship that we are going to uh, review today again. It's just like, you know, a little bit of a follow up. So the Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser. Now I'm thinking about, you know, just going all through the steps one by one. You guys know that there are jump timestamps. In the video description so you can definitely jump to a specific part that's you know holds your interests but i'm just gonna go through the entire review just you know as if this ship is new so with that being said let us start uh doing the inform or at least the reading the information that critic provided us how this ship came to be so the tarantula is the largest as the most and the most formidable starship in the tholian fleet uh, Tholian fleet. It is both durable and relative agile for a ship of its class. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> but cool. Uh, cool of you guys that write this thing. Uh, the Tarantula was built with versatility in mind and is, and is quite capable of performing nearly any role handily. Right, 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 right. First off the bat, I just want to say one thing. That this entire review and like all of the reviews that I do on my channel, this is based on my experience and also based upon um, the ship coming out of the box. Keep that in mind that like all of the uh, ship reviews that I do and if I say like this particular ship is not agile enough, in, you know, in this case, this particular ship is not agile. <laughs> it's definitely not because it is a dreadnought cruiser. The, those are like, you know, the highest or at least the lowest turning rate that there are in the in the game. So it's, you know, it doesn't really turn in um, in in this particular case. And all of the reviews, I just want to mention this. All of the reviews that I do is just, you know, um, with ships coming out of the box. Uh, I don't intend to do a review about how good a particular ship is just by saying like, well, we can enhance it with this and this console or this and this engines and it's going to be really good and it's going to be overpowered. No, I just do reviews coming out of the box. How is it going to perform coming out of the box without any modification or enhancement done to trade skills, abilities, you know, console, uh, bridge officer layout, you know, bridge traits and stuff like that. No, I'm just going to do reviews on how the ship is coming out of the box you guys can enhance it and build your own particular ship but these reviews that i do these are just mainly for you know how the ship comes out of the box and just visually how pleasing it is it for your for your particular uh um like how how visually is it pleasing right how is it good to to your eyes so with that being said that's just a little bit of a sidetrack Let's continue. The Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser comes equipped with the Tholian Web Cannon Universal Console. While this console is equipped, you can fire a devastating web cannon that will deal significant shield penetration physical damage to a number of foes uh, within 90 degree arc of your f uh, in the front of your starship. Affected enemies will be held briefly and suffer heavy physical damage over time. These consoles provide a passive boost to whole hit points and resistance to all damage. Um, this console mob can be equipped in any console slot. Uh, it may uh, be equipped in any Tholian ships and only one of these mods at any given time. Now this thing also comes up with a trait. So after achieving level 5 in your Starship Mastery, you will unlock the Energy Web uh, Starship trait. 
While this trade is slotted, activating beam overload, a surgical strikes or cannon rapid fire, your next attack will cause your foe to be trapped in an energy web. Uh, enemies trapped in the energy web will suffer heavy shield penetration, physical damage over time and be held briefly. This ability damage is improved by auxiliary power and a physical and uh, no sorry and a starship particle generation uh, generator skill. Energy web can be triggered once every 45 seconds. Uh, the Tholian Torrential Dreadnought Cruiser comes standard with one hangar bay of the Tholian Widow Fighters. Widow Fighters are armed with Tetrion Beams and Quantum Torpedoes. Uh, the Tholian Dreadnought Cruiser comes equipped with the Thermionic Torpedo Launcher. Thermionic Torpedoes are capable of uh, drawing the target's weapon and, and engine subsystem with each hit, reducing its damage output and speed temporarily. Very, very nice. Uh, so this is a tier 6. It is available for all factions. So Federation Klingons and the Romulans can have access to this ship. Um, the whole strength at level 60 is going to be a flat uh, 57,200 hit points. Uh, now this, like I said, coming out of the box with no enhancement uh, done to it, with with skills, traits, and you know consoles and abilities and stuff like that, with a shield modifier of 1.25, with a crew complement of 2,000. Now, um, now this is just something uh, that the old system would use. Uh, there was a uh, option right here for 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 crew, and that's basically how fast your skills and you know abilities would recharge. They actually remove this, uh, so this is not even part of the of the game anymore, or at least the game mechanics. Uh, it has four weapons on the front, four on the aft, with room for four device slots, with console modification, four tactical, four engineering, and three uh, science. A base uh, turn rate of 7.5 degrees per second, and an impulse modifier of 0 0.15, with an inertia reading of 35. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, this thing can also load uh, dual cannons, dual heavy cannons as well. Um, hangar bays, it only has one of them. These are loaded with Tholian Widow fighters. Also comes have with uh, comes equipped with that universal uh, Tholian web cannon. Now, because this is a um, cruiser, you're going to get cruiser communication arrays uh, package. So attract fire or weapon system efficiency. So more threat generation or more DPS um, oriented uh, skills and abilities are going to be enhanced by, by this uh, weapon system efficiency. And this is across the, the entire map. So all of your uh, teammates are also going to benefit from uh, weapon system efficiency if you care to activate that. Uh, Starship Mastery Package Dreadnought Cruiser, so rep repairs, enhanced plating, devastating weaponry, armored hull, and that unlockable Starship trait, the energy web. Uh, that is that uh, unlockable Starship trait if you uh, level this thing all the way to, uh, to level, uh, level 5. So let's get to the customization. Here we go with the customization. Um, whoa. Okay, so you can definitely zoom out, and then it shakes a little bit. <laughs> Why is it shaking? That is just weird. Anyway, this is the customization part. You can actually see it is really cool. Really cool. You can actually see that this thing is like... Stop moving. <laughs> this thing is like pre-equipped. It has the um, the um, the Nukara visuals pre-equipped, but it's yeah. Uh, we only have one template. We don't have any window types to uh, speak of, and we do. Oh, oh my God! Oh, this is badass. Oh, look at the materials that they use in the upgraded version. Wow. Wow, this is badass. Look at this. 
Now, this is how it comes out of the box. It's like, okay, it's kind of like scary, formidable. I, I understand that. Oh, man, this this upgrade. It kind of reminds me of the, um, the turret visuals a little bit. Wow. Looks really good. Um, you can do some pattern overlays on this thing if you want to mess it up. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Totally messed it up. Uh, what else can I mess up? Uh, something green. Oh, the inner part right here. Oh, the inner spikings as well. Okay, that's not good. All right. This thing is going to be huge in space. I'm going to compare it to the uh, triangle like I normally do the uh, science Lucari ship and um, and see how this thing is going to compare in its size. I can tell you this, it's going to be huge. <laughs> All right, so this is space. This is where we compare this huge <laughs> bulky ship against the small Lucari science ship, the Triangle, Dorito, whatever you guys are calling it these days. Um, I do want to say one thing, that I did cancel all of the changes that we were doing on the customization part. Wow, this is a really beautiful uh, looking ship, right? Um, so this is how the ship comes out of the box in its size, in its totality. It's like there is... I don't know, maybe you can stack up like seven or eight of these things of the Lucari front to back and it's still not going to be the same um, length of this, this particular ship. Look at that. Even the deflector dish has like spikes on it. <laughs> nice. Very cool, right? Very cool. I like the, sh the way the ship looks definitely piques my interest. I don't know about you guys, but definitely cool to see this thing. Um, in terms of like, this is something cool to uh, to mention. In terms of like, you know, moving the ship here and then just positioning it, uh, you know, uh, on the side of the car ship, I just gave up. It was really hard for me to actually position this ship. So what I actually did is I positioned the Lucari ship closer to this thing. Because that one is more uh, nimble and agile. You can actually move that thing around. This thing is like, <laughs> don't even bother. <laughs> so, uh, all right. With that being said, let's head over to the uh, shield visuals. Okay, so we are at my favorite spot right here. And we are definitely uh, taking a closer look at this ship in its, you know, in its size. Um... I want to see what the turning rate is. Uh, I do have a couple of trades, but those are just negligible. Uh, that's not something to be uh, writing home about. 11 degrees per second. So I've enhanced it. What was it? Was it 8 something? 8? Uh, wait, we can actually see it right here. More details. Uh, coming out of the box, it has... Where is it? 7.5. A turning rate of 7.5 degrees. So I've enhanced it by like three points, three degrees. And it's still taking like maybe like a minute or something like that to actually turn. I want to be a little bit closer to these, uh, to this station right here. And um, then we are definitely going to start equipping the different visuals. We are going to start off with the adapted Mako. That one. That one. This one. Adapted Mako space set. I'm actually going to zoom in because there are... Oh, this is as far as we can zoom in, guys. This is the adapted Mako of visuals on this thing. Something to note, this thing is still shaking. Why is it shaking so much? Okay, so this thing, this thing is definitely still utilizing the, um, the default, default uh, material plates that you guys are seeing, the, um, the new car of visuals. But it's being overridden by the um, uh, the adapted uh, Mako right here. 
Mm. You can actually see that this this wing triangle thingy that is spinning around also changes with the uh, colors. That's really cool, right? All right, let's do the edges visuals. All three pieces of the edges. Now this is as far as we can zoom in, so I can't actually go in any deeper than this. But it's kind of cool to look at, right? It's, everything is like blown out of proportions <laughs> just for this ship. We got this huge engine trail. And we are seeing some of the changes. I don't know if this is a bug because it's been like like ages that I did a review on this ship but I think that or maybe this is just part of the set maybe this entire thing should be like in the same color this blue should be gone maybe hmm we we'll actually have to look at the other uh, no it's kind of by design that like that okay okay Let's continue with the Borg visuals. Uh, Borg. Borg. And also the Borg visuals. Oh, look at that. I think I'm heading a little bit too close to the planet. I better do something about that. Let's move a little bit this way. That's quite enough. All right. Oh, we got the Borg deflector dish. Look at that. It's like scaled up. Nice. Oh, the tarantula. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, next in line is going to be the counter command. Um, this one, this one, that one. Oh, really cool. How can you not like this ship? Hmm. Oh, this is, um, this is interesting. The colors that they actually use, or at least not the colors, the, the, the material types that they're using is really interesting. Like obviously the counter command gives that that dark bluish color, but but this one right here that that I did not expect. All right, moving on with the delta, delta mm, two and three. All three pieces of the Delta. Wow, look at this thing. It's been so long, I don't even remember uh, actually 
making a review about this ship, like... I probably did somewhere, and I just... Yeah, the amount of reviews and the amount of ships that there, you know, that there is in STO right now, I thought I heard, um, like, one of the... Um, one of the developers saying that was like about 600 ships plus or something in the game currently. Trust me, I have not done a review on all of them, but I think I've done like half or something like that. Maybe 200. 200 plus. So, um, excuse me or pardon me if I don't remember. But this thing kind of looks like it's like... 3D, 3D printed right now, right? Because it has those edges. Kind of looks like that. Or at least to me, all oh, that transition is awesome. I love that part. Oh, this is cool as well. Look at this. We actually don't see the Delta visuals a lot being displayed like this because there is usually like other material types. Wow. Actually makes a difference. I love the way that this part comes in here. Really nice. Now, obviously, we cannot change anything of these reddish uh, patterns up here, but that's part of it, I guess. All right, Delta got showcasing a lot. Uh, let's do the Dyson. Mm, that one is one, two. The rear of the Dyson, all three pieces. Oh, look at that. That is like slick. It's like cleaned out. <laughs> this thing has been through the uh, through the car wash. And there is a thing in space. A space wash. <laughs> Oh, that is just awesome. All right, let me flip this thing over. Nice. Okay, the color of this thing is definitely glowing when it's illuminated very cool all right next in line is going to be the iconians uh that one mm -hmm. and three the iconian visuals right here It's kind of kind of cool to see, or at least not cool. It's kind of weird to see the the pivot point is basically far far to the back. It's basically here somewhere. It's not even on where these things are rotating. It's more there. I don't know why um, why the game developers, or at least the the the, the ship builders, are actually doing these. Why not make the pivot point like? You know, in the middle of the of the ship. I mean, I can understand that it needs to be like a little bit. Oh, very cool. To the front or maybe to the back, but look at this thing. It's like, yeah, it's not really uh, uh, at the center, and that's just not adding to the appeal of this ship, obviously, or at least for me. My pet peeves. <laughs> Next is going to be the gem head art. Uh, that one. Uh, this one. Mm, that one. 
Okay. Okay, look at that. It, this thing is definitely looking like majestic in its nature. Just because it's like big. I like, you know, I like those stuff. Because it's like a big ship and it's like, if this thing was like, if it had like two hangar bays, man, this thing would be a beast. If it was like a full on carrier, because this thing also has like one hangar bay. And in my opinion, that's not a carrier. <laughs> carrier needs to have at least two. And maybe more. <laughs> I wish. Now, the, um, the highest amount of, you know, hanger pets, uh, hanger bays we can have is two. But then you can also add, like, the... Um, the scorpion fighters, right? So you can basically have a little bit more than, than than just two. And there are other consoles as well that spawn on pets and stuff like that. But that's, yeah. That's not really pets, is it? Um, Nukara. This thing already has the Nukara. Why do I need to add Nukara visuals to this thing? Oh, it does change that. Okay. Uh, does it? Uh, disable. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Doesn't do anything to the visuals. Yeah, okay. Um, but it does give the uh, the deflector dish animation. Yeah, there it goes. Nice. So you guys can see that the engines are just plain. So we are definitely going to move on to the next one. And the next one is going to be the Omega. Mm, that one, that one, that one. Here we go with the Omega visuals. <laughs> nice. Let's flip this thing over. Okay, next one is going to be the Riemann. Um, that one, this one, this one. Here we go with the Riemann visuals for you guys. Hmm. All right, after the Remans come the Romulans. Uh, there. There and there. Oh, 
oh, I'm definitely, oh, excited about the uh, Zenkethi visuals. And I'm just moving a little bit too much, uh, too fast. Uh, okay, so these are the Romulans, <laughs> just one at a time. Definitely going to wait for that. Romulan visuals right here. Very cool to see the Romulan visuals as well. I mean, you can actually only see like, you know, a little bit of uh, greenish outline to it. And it's like, okay, you can definitely see that it is, uh, it's cool in nature, right? Totally something different. And I do enjoy the, the materials that they're using for this uh, plating right here. The broken down version. All right, next one is going to be the temporal visuals in its entirety. Hmm. Okay. All right. Flipping this thing over. Hmm. <laughs> kind of looks funny to me, <laughs> the way it looks. Like it's... Like it doesn't belong somehow. It's kind of weird. All right, um, moving on to the temporal. The temporal visuals. And I just saw this thing spike up a little bit. Is that because the, oh yeah, 12 degrees per second. All right. Because I just saw it like spike just a little bit in its turning rate. I'm like, okay, so the uh, the engines definitely are helping out for the uh, turning rate or this thing. Remember, coming out of the box, this thing has 7.5 degrees per second. So, you know, making a turn is going to cost you the entire childhood. <laughs> You're going to be an adult when this thing is going to turn 360 degrees. Oh, look at that. That is just, oh, that's beautiful, man. That's crazy. I love it. I actually, I love this thing. All right, um, the Breen. Mm -mm -mm. This one, that one, and this one. Here we go with the Breen visuals. Not what you guys would expect, right? And I'm probably going to hit the space station. So I'm just going to move a little bit away from it. When this thing is going to point the right direction. And that's about now. And then go turning again. And let's flip this thing over. Kind of like old newspapers, right? Like you would have, like, I don't know if you guys um, were here when they actually um, had newspapers. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, everybody is on tablet or phone these days. Nobody's actually reading newspapers anymore, right? Uh, ooh, ooh, the Lucari visuals. Wow, I don't think anybody has seen this one with the Lucari visuals. Where are you? Uh, that one is one. Uh, engines. And here we go. Okay. Okay, I'm a little bit disappointed. Where is the wow factor right here? <laughs> it's not. But that is because it is being illuminated. When I oh that glow. That is that is beautiful. When this thing is going to be uh on the darker side, yeah, you guys are gonna be amazed. Let's get there in three, two, one, and flip. Nice. Oh, here we go with that transition. That's nice. Um, I am a little... Oh, here we go. I was just about to say, where are like the uh, white highlights? I was expecting all of these uh, crevices right here to have like white outlines. But they only did that in like certain areas. That's just a big uh, opportunity that they missed to make this thing even more badass. Like this part of here. If they actually made it like in these crevices, oh, that was going to be beautiful. I definitely enjoy this part right here. That's beautiful in the deflector dish housing. That's awesome. All right, let's continue the prevailing regalia. Now, I do want to say one thing as well, but let me just take a closer look at this prevailing regalia space set oh that is cool actually you see like all of these outlines that's nice and inside they got the mirrors nice and in the inner uh workings of this thing as well it's full of mirrors nice Um, coming back to the, the reason why we actually, or at least why I'm actually making a review on this thing. Um, this does not mean that I'm going to do like updated videos on like all of the ships because, you know, making a video definitely takes longer than one hour. You guys are only seeing just a part of it, not the entire process. Uh, so, oh, the engine modifiers are right here inside this triangle. Um, cause it's, you know, it takes a lot of time, uh, editing and then uploading and then, you know, rendering that all, you know, that all adds up. So I'm not going to do on, um, updated videos, updated visuals on all of the, all of the ships, but, you know, maybe here and there when the, when we're going to get like a full moon or something like that. And there is there is enough uh, requests uh, for one particular ship. I can definitely do an updated video on the visuals and stuff like that. But uh, not all of them, because that would be insane. There are so many ships to do. That's like crazy. Uh, the last pieces that we're going to equip on this thing is going to be the Bajoran visuals. Oh, man. Oh, that is bad. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. I am still sick. And it's been like two years now. <clears throat> or at least that's how it feels. Wow, the Bajorian visuals are not doing this ship any justice at all. These are not... Yeah, these are not good. Alright, let's flip this thing over. Maybe it's... No, <laughs> it's the same. I was thinking maybe it's better on the dark side of things. Nope. All 
All right. Let us equip the my. Wow, I have you know wanting to do this from the beginning, but here is the Zenkethi uh, visuals. Wow, badass, badass. Nice. Wow, this thing is actually moving faster right now. What's the statistics on this thing? 11.1. Okay, that's, yeah. Remember, like most of the escorts and pilot ships, they usually have like a base turn rate of like 16 or, you know, in that vicinity, 15, 16. Eleven point one turning rate, nice. Oh, I love it. I just love it. All right, flipping it over. Wow. Who would have thought this thing looks so beautiful with the St. Kelly visuals? Now we do have one more vanity shields that we're going to equip and these are just I actually don't want to equip it. <laughs> I just don't want to. But then again we have to. The uh discovery visuals. Here we go. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm liking it. What? <laughs> wow, that was a surprise. Oh, this is... Wow, this is beautiful. Man, okay. I don't know what the deal is with this honeycomb design right here. I've never seen that one before. On the on the discovery vanity visuals, but I like it. I like it on this particular ship. It's really good. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's really good. I like it. Wow, was not expecting that. I mean, to me personally, it has more appeal on uh, when it's like has a little bit of sunlight on the hull, like this right here. It's like it's like bland. It's nothing, but on top of here, you can actually see the um, amount of details and like the different colors on this thing. Nice. Wow, did not expect that. But still, my favorite is still going to be the Zenkethi. Very nice, right? Looks badass. All right, so um, let's do a little bit of a rundown. We got four weapon slots on the aft, four on the uh, four on the front, four on the aft. This thing also comes equipped with the uh, Tholium ther Thermionic Torpedo. Let's read more details on this thing. Uh, torpedoes are highly damaged projectiles that are effective against ship's hull, but shields absorb most of the impact. Thermionic torpedoes deal less damage than most other torpedoes, but they have also capable of drawing the target's weapon and engine subsystem with each hit. Uh, reducing their damage output and speed temporarily. Um, 90 degree targeting arc, 10 kilometer range, 10 seconds to recharge, dealing 2,793.1 kinetic damage with 50% to uh, chance to drain 17.6 weapon and engine power for the next uh, 8 seconds with minus 2.5 accuracy rating. Oh, no, no, that's from the buff that I have. Plus 20 in accuracy rating. Very nice. 
uh, after launching mines or torpedo or targetable torpedoes grants them temporary hit points. Eh, that's good. Firing weapons, 2.5% physical damage. That's going to ignore shields. Projectile, 10% damage. Physical damage, 1%. That is cool, so ignore shields. Eh. Nobody actually uses these things anymore because it's like... If you want to really like a good drain build, there are, you know, builds to do that. Just not, you know, just using one weapon slot to do drain. But yeah, it's still good. Uh, skill that affect this ability, weapon training, projectile weapon training, and also drain expertise to make it more efficient in its draining abilities. Um... Admirality. So on the Admirality, we have four stars in his rarity with 53 in engineering, 43 in um, tactical and 30 in science. And special ability plus 10 to engineering per tactical ship. Meaning like if you equipped more tactical ships in this thing, you're going to get plus 10 into your engineering, um, you know, total amount of points. Uh, 18 hours in maintenance after use, obviously. So keep that in mind. Uh, this thing also has that Tholian web cannon. Um, at default, it's going to give you 11.2 kinetic and energy and damage resistance rating and also 3.3% in maximum hull capacity. So that's just basic hit points. Um, affected foe at maximum 10 of them, 10 kilometer range with a 90 degree targeting arc in the forward facing uh, of your ship. Six seconds is going to build up the charge and, and uh, it's going to take 0 0.6 seconds to activate with a two minute cooldown. And after the six seconds build up of charging, the Tholian web cannon effect up to 10 foes with a 90 degree arc of your uh, starship is going to deal 4,955.2 Physical damage that's going to ignore the shields uh, to the foe, 2,741.5 physical damage every 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seconds for the next 12 seconds. It's going to ignore the shields, so if you can trap them and, you know, have the full duration of 12 seconds, that's a lot of physical damage. And it's also going to hold the target for the next 4.7 seconds. Activating any exotic damage ability will grant 4% firing cycle haste for energy based weapons for the next 10 seconds. Now, this is also part of a space set. If you have two pieces of this thing, plus 10% in exotic damage, plus 10% in flight turn rate, definitely need of that on this particular ship. And if you have all three of these space sets, um. You're going to get the Tholian radiation field, two minute cooldown to the foe, minus uh, 519 damage to enemy shields within one second, and minus 25, per, uh, 25 energy damage resistance rating for one second to, enemy th to enemies within the radius. Now, if you want to have more effectiveness on this thing, put some point into drain expertise in the three cent bonus, obviously. Um, what else? Starship Mastery. Now, I have not unlocked the entire, um, the entire, um, uh, level 5 of these Masteries, because I basically don't use this ship at all. <laughs> but level 1 is going to give you rapid repairs, it's going to increase the next amount of your hull, or 1.25 of your current maximum every 3 seconds in space, twice this amount is regenerated out of combat. Uh, level 2, plus 25 energy and a radiation damage resistance rating. Level 3, plus 25 in critical chance, enhancing all of your weapons, torpedoes and uh, beams or cannons, whatever you're using. Level 4 is going to enhance your maximum hit points by 10%. And that unlockable starship trait, the energy web. It's going to deal 665.5 physical damage every 0 0.5 seconds for uh, for 6 seconds. It's going to ignore the shield. It's going to hold the target for 3.5 and can only be used every 45 seconds. Um, so 
activating beam overload cannon rapid fire or surgical strike this thing is going to um, apply the energy web uh, trait um, to the enemy really nice really nice uh, bridge officer stations now I'm actually just you know put this as a build together for my uses don't spend any more time in you know thinking what this is all about don't even bother this is just you know something that i'm um there we go got a new friend request um this is just something that i you know um stitched up together is probably the better word because um no real thought has gone into this this is just you know to showcase the build so we have a lieutenant uh, universal slash intelligence uh, station. We have an ensign universal station. We have a commander engineering station right here. We have a lieutenant commander tactical slash command ability station and a lieutenant commander science station. Um, now I am going to show you guys the bridge of this thing because it is really awesome. And let me just do that right now. So this is the uh, Tholian bridge. Um, I don't know if we can actually go outside of these. I don't think so. These are just, yeah, these are just placeholders. But there is something really cool that I'm definitely going to show you guys that, that might be interesting for you guys to, to explore on your own. Um, like, all of these things are consoles on the wall. If you could just go closely to it, it's going to raise up out of the ground. And you can actually use them. I found that really cool in the beginning. I was like walking around. I'm like, what's going on? There is nothing here. Where are the consoles and stuff like that? And they just they just lit up. That is just cool. Uh, another cool feature is if you go up here. And you're like, Ooh, okay, there is nothing to be seen here. Where is the window? Where is the stuff like that? What is What is up with this thing right here? In the middle of this thing, and then you have the option to raise the consoles. Ta da! <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. We actually have like some kind of like mirror system as well. We can actually showcase that. Unfortunately, it is not showing up my uh, character. What does that mean? What does that mean for my character? Am I like a. Uh, am I like a vampire? Am I Dracula right here? Because vampires don't show up on mirrors, right? And my particular character is not showing up on mirrors. That's just weird. And this should be like a viewing screen, right? Some kind of like information readout. And also lower the consoles and then everything goes away again. Isn't that cool? I think this is like the most coolest thing that they ever built visually wise. All right, let's um, hold on. I never saw this part. There are consoles on the wall as well because the Tholians are like, they can actually walk on walls as well. So this is basically like a terminal as well. I never thought of that. That is sick. They can actually utilize, you know, the uh the walls and consoles look at that it's cool anyway let's take this thing into combat and show a little bit of um a little bit of combat and you know how uh how not to uh, use this thing in combat <laughs> now before i actually go into combat i do want to showcase these um uh hanger pets um so these are uh, the Tholian uh, Widow Fighters launches three Tholian Widow Fighters that have a Tetrion Beam Array, Quantum Torpedoes, they support, they also support a Reclose Carrier, Tachyon Grid, and uh, gain extra attacks when used uh, uh, on them. Um, these are not really the best one out there, obviously the best one is... Uh, the ones from the uh, Fleet Starbase, and I would definitely recommend you guys grabbing them. Uh, I think I have them. 
Yeah, these are the elite ones right here. Um, these give out, they have Tetrion Beams Array, they have the Quantum Torpedoes, they also have that Tetrion Dual Beam Banks, uh, they have Fire at Wheel 1, and they also support the uh, Reclus Tetrion Grid. Uh, that is um, when you have the Reclus on you. So here we go. We got Japori going on. And I am still using the Bajorian visuals. Or at least the Bajorian sh shield set with the Zenkethi visuals. And um, also the Elite, obviously. The Elite Hanger Pets. Because uh, those are just OP in my book. So let's see how this thing is going to perform. Um going to use a couple of these guys and this thing also has that uh, scimitar blast that is uh, really cool look at that you guys are just seeing it right there it's on the move and then it blew up or this is going to blow up this thing because it's going to do uh, damage over time if you can have like an enemy up there in the blast you can uh, dispose of him that way <laughs> Uh, I'm going to use a little bit more firepower, uh, even though my shields are almost depleted. Now, what is good about this thing is that it's, you know, it has enough uh, consoles for tactical, enough consoles for engineering. So those two are definitely not a big issue. But the big issue is with this thing is the turning rate. Turning rate is really low. Or it is... Uh, you know, it's not able to turn really quickly. And obviously, I'm not using the best skills out there. Yes, I know that. Um, but this is just, you know, the representation of what this thing is capable at the low end of the spectrum. Like, you know, whenever this thing comes uh, out of the box, it's, you know, it's doing two, uh, double digits, triple digits here and there. Um, that's not good that the left shields are failing because it's going to blast you guys. <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, kill this guy. We got the Thermionic Torpedo going up there. Boom. Did 4k damage. And the Garumba Siege Destroyer right on our butt. Yeah, hull integrity is not really an issue with this thing because it has enough hit points. You can definitely take out a little bit. But as you guys are seeing, this thing needs to turn around. And it's not doing that. It's really slowly doing that. Thermionic Torpedo, go, go, go. If you can point this thing in the right direction, yeah, it's going to dish out a lot and a lot of firepower. Um, yeah, evasive, you know, evasive maneuvers could help, which is part of engines could help. I'm going to actually want to grab this guy right here. In three, two, one, fire. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is so cool animation right there. <laughs> nice. Now, it did trap this guy. And it's doing like physical damage over time with this guy. This guy is basically dead. If you can actually point this particular skill or action... Um, towards your enemy, you can basically, you know, kill a cube, kill a sphere, or whatever is going to be in that, uh, you know, in that vicinity in your forward arc. Hello, why am I not moving forward? There we go. Um, yeah, so, you know, um, a lot of, you know, better ships out there. For this particular um, uh, set of console layout and you know and, and particular 
uh, turning rate and stuff like that. But I say it is, you know, it is fun to do, um, to fly this thing, if you, even if you have it. It's really cool. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm happy to, 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 to actually use this thing. Can you turn? What is going on? Why aren't you turning? You got enough engine power. There we go. Uh, let's grab this guy. And I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't use like, you know, um, cannons on this thing. Maybe turrets, 360 degree turrets. But that's, that's just me. I wouldn't use any uh, dual heavies on this thing because it takes a long time to go here to your enemy. My recommendation would be like, you know, just use, uh, just use beams. I just love that. <laughs> That's just awesome. Um, yeah, I would use beams um, on this thing just uh, because it has like a really high turning rate and it just, you know, does not want to turn. For the rest, this is a very cool ship. It has, you know, lots of like, you know, special abilities, universal uh, slots or universal bridge officer layout. So you can definitely mismatch you know, whatever you're lacking at that particular point. It's really good on DPS. It's really good on survivability. The only thing that it doesn't have is, you know, a good turn rate. And um, with that being said, you know, if you, if you want to enhance the turning rate, you basically are going to sacrifice other parts of this ship. You're going to uh, not, like sacrifice DPS and stuff like that. So, you know, keep that in mind. And with that being said, I hope you guys had a little bit of fun and entertainment coming out of my channel. Hope to see you on the next one. Later.